Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the class uh, Buddhism 201, Intro to Buddhist Meditation. Uh, today's date is uh, October 17th, October 17th, 2022. This is the second uh, week. Last week, we did not have class, so this is the second week. Uh, of our journey. <clears throat> I hope everyone is doing great. Uh, so you now have the idea where we are heading in this class. Because in the first week, uh, we discussed about what we are going to, what we are planning to do in this class, our, our agenda actually. So we will proceed now with the uh, with the basics. Uh, today we are going to talk about the uh, Buddhist meditation, uh, pre-Buddhist meditation, uh, the influence from the pre-Buddhist time to Buddhist meditation. So the last week we were referring to a special word. Uh, meditation, uh, we were discussing that it was not a Buddhist invention, right? Not, not, not really the word meditation, the English word meditation is a very late uh, addition, but uh, whatever the practices that uh, in terms of meditation that uh, the world has done, especially the spiritual traditions and uh, spiritual traditions have uh, done in terms of meditation, in terms of the practice of meditation uh, that goes back to long, long time. At least about 5,000 years ago, uh, history says that there were some uh, practices in some parts of the world, which could be identified as meditation in modern terms. So don't think that in Buddhism, uh, in the sixth century BCE, as you know, uh, Buddhism came into existence in the sixth century BCE. BCE means before the common era. So that means even 500, at least 500 years before uh, the common era. So roughly about 20, more than 25 centuries ago, 2,500 years ago, uh, there was not, there, they didn't use the word meditation, <laughs> remember. Um, but, uh, as the, the last time I was mentioning to you that uh, in Buddhist circles, the term for that kind of practice is bhavana. And uh, I saw some of you have done your homework with regards to the uh, question that I gave you. Bhavana, you have to remember this word. When you talk about Buddhist meditation, it is nothing else, bhavana, B-H-A-V-A-N-A, B-H-A-V-A-N-A, bhavana. That is the term that we today translate as meditation in common day-to-day -day language. But in 100 years, we do not know what, what kind of word uh, in the future, they will use. But right now, uh, we use that term, meditation. So bhavana, <clears throat> don't ever think that uh, these practices came into existence from nothing. No. Uh, before the Buddha, there were some practices, some techniques, some uh, sort of... Uh, beliefs, some sort of philosophy uh, with regards to uh, what we are talking. Oh, before that, let me introduce some other terms, English terms, 
uh, that will commonly that are commonly used to identify these practices. So very first one thing is meditation. So hundred the, the, the other terms that I'm going to introduce to you, they are not 100% equal in meaning, but somewhat similar. Sometimes you might have seen the word samadhi. Samadhi, that's a Buddhist term as well as pre-Buddhist term. Samadhi or concentration. So meditation, concentration, contemplation, you know contemplation, reflection. Hmm? So all these words are sort of uh, in similar, they have the similar sort of meaning. Uh, one pointedness of mind, uh, controlling the mind, which I do not like, controlling the mind, uh, restraint, reflection, all those kind of words. So before the Buddha came into existence, there were, in India, there were some other religious or spiritual practitioners, teachers, and they followed certain methods, certain techniques of uh, concentration or meditation or samadhi. <laughs> but they did not use the word bhavana. They did not, remember, they did not use the word bhavana for such practices. Only the Buddha came along with this new word, bhavana, okay? But samadhi, that word was there, that samadhi was there. So pre-Buddhist India is recognized, identified as uh, Brahmanic. Hindu, later, later word is Hindu, but uh, that time the word they used to identify that tradition was Brahmanism, Brahmanism. Brahman, uh, you must have seen in other classes that uh, the world is a creation along with uh, human beings, uh, all the beings is a creation from Brahma. Brahma is the uh, all powerful being who uh, is responsible for generating this universe, creating this universe. And that person, his teaching, I mean, his principles became Brahmanism uh, or the followers of that God, that, that, that all powerful being as they identified as Brahmana. Brahmana is the highest group of people in that society. Society was classified into four sections. The highest being the Brahmana, uh, the, the, what they followed was called Brahmanism. So in Brahmanism, they had different sorts of practices, rituals and other kinds of practices. They had something called uh, something similar to what we call today meditation. Not exactly the same thing, uh, something similar to meditation. Samadhi and all those words are found in their texts. So that means they had some sort of uh, reflection, contemplation, that kind of thing. And what they did was they uh, practice certain things to control their breathing, breathing, okay? Uh, when you breathe with certain control, you can attain certain level of higher mindfulness, higher contemplation, concentration. So they had certain practices like that. 
later on you will see when we proceed with this class that Buddha, uh, what he did was he uh, innovated this system. He used the same breath uh, into another way of practice. We will discuss it later whenever time comes. But what I'm focusing right now is the Buddhist meditation is, the roots of Buddhist meditation is uh, there in the pre-Buddhist uh, pre -Buddhist India. Uh, a very uh, good example for this thing is, as many scholars have pointed out, and even very obvious thing is that when you read about the Buddha's biography, Buddha's life story, Siddhartha Gautama, when he left the palace, when he renounced his family life, he went in search of truth. He went in search of a method to overcome suffering. What, he, what did he do? The very first thing he did was he went to, went to certain teachers. So those teachers are not Buddhist. Right? So he went in search of certain teachers, spiritual advanced, spiritually advanced uh, people. One of them is Alar Kalam. If you happen to notice Buddha's life story, biography, anywhere you will see the teachers, two teachers, Aral Kalam and Uddhaka Ramaputta. Two teachers, Uddhaka Ramaputta and Alara Kala. These two teachers, uh, the Buddha uh, went to them and then uh, practiced under them, learned whatever they could offer. And basically what they offered was uh, a certain uh, higher level of, higher level of controlling your mind and attaining certain higher spiritual status. But the Buddha, he thought, oh, that is not the end. That is not what he was looking for. He was looking for uh, more serene, more serenity and a problem for the big answer, big, big question. I mean, the answer for the big question, the problem. Problem is suffering, human suffering. How to overcome suffering? Even if you have all kinds of High, higher level of uh, spiritual status attained by the practices of those teachers, as soon as you lose that status, suffering arises again. So that is not the complete answer according to the Buddha. That is why he uh, said no to those two teachers, but he learned from them. He learned from them whatever the basic techniques that were available at that time from those two teachers. This is the important point for us. That means that the Buddha was influenced by the existing tradition, pre-existing tradition at the, at the time. And again, if you read Buddha's life story, uh, after following the middle path, you know already, uh, six years of long, uh, uh, strenuous, hard uh, practice. He gave up all those things and then he followed the middle path. After following the middle path, the Buddha was able to uh, gain his salvation or what you may call uh, enlightenment. He was able to attain enlightenment at the age of 35. Uh, and then, as soon as he attained enlightenment, he was so happy that he knew that he is released from all kinds of suffering. So he went not to share that experience with the others. And then as soon as he was looking for his, uh, to, to whom uh, he should go to share his experience, it came to his mind about those two teachers. 
because maybe they, they wanted to show them that uh, their methods does not their method does not work and i myself found something new let me share it with you that kind of idea and then he looked where they were and but at that time they were not uh, alive they were dead of course and then what does this say this 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 incident it says that uh, buddha was influenced by the pre existing meditative practices meditation practices he uh, was influenced he had a certain influence from them but he invented a new method this is what is very important because we are <clears throat> in this class we are focusing on the uh, buddhist meditation right introduction to buddhist meditation so pre buddhist uh, meditation practices were really really influential in forming a buddhist meditation so the other important thing now is <clears throat> how do you know about buddhist meditation which was started in india about 25 centuries ago uh, the only source we have right now nobody <coughs> nobody is there to tell us this is what happened and <laughs> these were the practices that we did nobody there but we have a collection of texts as has been uh, shown in other classes too that we have the what you may call the three baskets tripitaka uh, the buddha's teachings are classified in those texts so we believe <clears throat> not we we in the sense that the scholars believe earliest uh, documents earliest texts are there in those uh three pitakas three baskets the teachings of the buddha and <clears throat> they contain uh the very beginning of buddhist meditation techniques so that is the source that is the storehouse that we have to uh, go back to in order to uh find out the uh, very origin of buddhist meditation so this is very important <laughs> or in those in those texts you find the word bhavana bhavana and the translation given to that word is mental culture getting rid of unwholesome mental qualities uh by developing by inculcating uh positive wholesome mental states this is the important thing uh technically we accept that we all have unwholesome uh mental states in ourselves unwholesome that is the word akusala unwholesome mental states when you are use the word unwholesome it means we do have like a jealousy anger hatred hmm all kinds of uh, domineering states in our mind sometimes we are very uh, arrogant Mm, hostile all those things are embedded in us those are unwholesome states and then what we need to do is to get rid of these unwholesome states uh, for what to be wholesome when you are wholesome uh, when you are good uh, it's good for you as well as for others so in order to get rid of the unwholesome what we need to do is to 
cultivate the wholesome things. We have wholesome things too. We have love, we have compassion, we have generosity, sharing things with others, kindness, mindfulness, all kinds of good positive things too, wholesome things too. So what we are going to do in, in Buddhist meditation, the basic teaching is that you have to overcome your unwholesomeness, your unwholesome states of mind with the development of wholesome states of mind. It's easily understood. If this is unwholesome, what you need to do is you have to cover this unwholesomeness with the good wholesome states of mind. This development is called bhavana. This, uh, this type of uh, healthy uh, development mindset, healthy mindset is called bhavana, developing uh, good mental qualities. Why, why we are developing them? In order to get rid of the bad, unwholesome qualities of mind. It's just like gardening. When you garden, if you have any experience in gardening, you know that we have to get rid of the weeds. Weeds grow faster. <laughs> Sometimes they don't need water or manure, anything. In the same way in human mind, the weeds, the unwholesome things, anger, hatred, jealousy, all kinds of negative things, they grow really fast. They don't need any nourishment. <laughs> they really grow very fast. But it's very hard for you to uh, develop. Uh, it's very hard for you to allow to grow uh, good qualities like love, compassion, kindness, generosity, all those good things. Compassion. Hmm? Uh, so in, 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 in Buddhist meditation, the very basic thing that we need to understand is that in our mind, we have to develop these good positive qualities so that the weeds can die down. Weeds, weeds will not arise again when you have the good positive things. Weeds, I use the word weed uh, in order to identify the unwholesome states of mind. So this is meditation. To do, uh, that, this, is the, this is the principle. To do that, there are many kinds of techniques. Those techniques are now developed into many different branches and many different techniques, <laughs> new uh, innovative practices, uh, many, many things. But the basic thing is, Bhavana, culture of your mind. See the word culture. Culture your mind. Culture means developing your mind, getting rid of the bad qualities in place. You, in return, you develop the good qualities. This is called Bhavana. So, but in the pre Buddhist uh, India, pre Buddhist India, we have Brahmanism was uh, Brahmanism and also Jain. Jain practices were there. They were fo not focused on this type of thing. They were focused on attaining uh, higher states of mind by controlling your mind. You are not cultivating your mind, but you are controlling your mind. That is why uh, you have to hold on your breath, uh, you don't eat certain food, you don't eat too fast. Mm. Still, uh, in Buddhist, even in Buddhist meditation right now, you see the, the, the shadow of those things. Uh, fasting, mm. refraining from certain things, that type of thing. Because the, that is the influence uh, we received, Buddhism received from the existing tradition. 
in any given culture, in any given society, uh, that is how things happen. So Buddha's invention, new uh, finding, discovery was that Buddhist meditation, by way he named it as bhavana, to attain samadhi, concentration, you have to do certain practices, of course. Uh, we will discuss this later. In Buddhist meditation, there are two divisions. One is called samatha. Samatha is the attaining the uh, tranquility, calmness in your mind. The other, other section is called vipassana. This is the two types of meditation that we have in Buddhism. Concentration of your mind, calming your mind, and on the other hand, investigation of reality, vipassana, looking into things as they are. So you see two, two strands. One is um, sort of uh, balancing your mind, attaining certain level of serenity, calmness, concentration. And on the other side, after attaining that status, you can see things as they are, which, which we call vipassana, insight. So two types of meditation in Buddhism. Uh, you may say that uh, samatha or the tranquility meditation was there in India at that time, before the Buddha, that those teachers that Buddha went to, uh, they had the ability to ability of concentration, calming their mind, controlling their mind, which we call samatha or samadhi. Okay, but the Buddhist meditation, when it comes to Buddha's time, he invented the new technique of looking things as they are, deeply looking at the reality, understanding the reality, you can change your mind and you can change your life and you can change the whole world, <laughs> that type of thing. So this is the uh, uh, beginning of Buddhist meditation. So the, at the very beginning, Buddhism was highly influenced by the pre-existing Brahmanical system. Uh, now you should be familiar with these terms. Brahmanical, uh, Brahmanical system influenced Buddhist meditation. We gave very good example that the Buddha himself, he went to two existing teachers. Those teachers were the people who were practicing uh, the existing methods. So Buddha was influenced by them, but later on, Buddha invented his own method as a teacher and then that became so popular still in the world uh, called Buddhist meditation. Okay, and that's it for today. <clears throat> As I told you in the last class, in this class as well, we will be, uh, for, we will be paying attention to your homework. So please submit your homework every week as I told you, in as a Word document, okay? As a Word document attached to your email, please send your homework. And also remember, write down your name. <laughs> Otherwise, I do not know who is who. <laughs> so please do so. So if you have any question, please feel free to uh, contact me. Uh, hopefully uh, you got the uh, idea and then uh, let's proceed. So thank you very much for being here today and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you.